I will post the uh, finished animation on uh, YouTube as well, so, so you can see how it turns out. Okay, so I'm happy with my animation. This is how it's going to go. What we need to do now is actually animate it. Now, to start an animation, you would press F10 instead of F9, and that begins your animation. However, we need to set in our render globals an output, as you can see. Now, if I wanted to, I could click the Save Animation button, and it will allow me to save the animation somewhere. Uh, let's see. I could put it in here. And you would give it a name. And you can see it will save it as an AVI file. I could select anything here. I could select AVIs or anything else. This will depend on the plugins you have in your machine at the time and the codecs you have in your machine at the time. Normally I would select something like AVI. And in the options I could actually select the particular codec. If I had DivX I would use that if I was posting it on the web or whatever. And it would render out and you would have at the end of it a finished AVI file. Which is all well and good for a little short animation you just want to show, show off. However, if you're doing anything semi-serious you will want to avoid using this entirely and you want to move down here to the save RGB. Now in save RGB I'll select a place to save it and I'll give it a flyby say. Now what happens here is it will save every frame as an individual picture and I could choose any of these formats. I'll stick with JPEG just now and it individually numbers it and we can choose the number and format here, how we will like it done. If we were doing thousands of frames, we would obviously select more. But we'll have it do this just now. So each one will be individually numbered. And what this allows us to do is we can then upload those files, those JPEGs, into a separate program and create our animation there. Uh, why is that a plus point? Well, it means I could render huge animations in sections, I could do the first 300 frames and then turn it off, come back the next day, do 301 to 600. Can't do that if I rendered with the AVI. I would have to edit in an edit and sweep. Also, if I save it this way, if I encode it with DivX and I don't like the quality or the results, I can then re-encode it using QuickTime, mobs, whatever. Cannot do that once this is rendered as an AVI. So this gives you some uh, reliability and scope for change. So I always tend to do this, I always render it as uh, individual frames. So there we go, if I now press F10, auto frame advances on, turn off render display, yes. And so it will begin, and it will show you each frame, how long it's going to take, how long the sequence is going to take as a whole, and we would just leave this running until it's finished. So there you go, that's the start of that. This will now render out and uh, we'll have a finished animation at the end of it. I'll show you the finished animation in another sequence and I'll show you uh, how to create the actual animation once these frames are done. So let's move to that now. Okay, in this uh, part of the tutorial what we're looking at now is a program called Virtual Dub which is a free download. Uh, you'll get that from the internet. Uh, now what Virtual Dub allows us to do is to take our sequence of frames that we have just rendered and turn them into a variety of video formats. So let's begin by first loading our video sequence. Uh, as you can see, it's separate frames. However, the program will automatically load the linked segments so that we have our full 300 frames. And if I play this, you get a preview of the animation. There we go, nice flyby. Now this would also allow us to uh, add audio at this time, if we had an audio file we wanted to put on, music or sound effects. But the thing we are interested in is compression. Uh, let's choose uh, FFD Show Video Codec and Configure. And here we could do all sorts, we can have it as DivX, XVID, we choose our quality, MPEG-4, we'll leave it at that, I think. Okay, and all we have to do now is save as an AVI. Uh, fly by 001, good for me. And it now encodes it. And that should be job done. Let's uh, switch to there. 
multiply by 0, 0, 1. And there we have our finished uh, AVI. Quality is not bad. There's uh, very little difference from that in the plain frames. So I'm happy with that. I'll upload that one. Now, as you can see, the advantage of doing this by individual frames is that I could go in and alter any individual frame using something like Photoshop or GIMP if I wanted some bizarre special effect or if I wanted to correct a problem. Uh, or it also means I can now go compression and choose an entirely different compression and configuration and save this as a completely different style of AVI or MOV or whatever. Whereas if I'd rendered it as an animation, I would have spent six hours rendering it last night and have one finished animation over which I would have no control. So I always recommend to you that you use single frames for your animations and then use something like Virtual Dub or uh, Adobe Premiere will do it as well uh, and create your movie files that way. We could also we'll go in here, we could do things like export as an animated GIF even or just uh, any kind of AVI. So there you have it, that's how you create a simple animation, a simple flyby in Lightwave and Virtual Dub. Okay, more from you later. Bye.